Yeah, that road, that marvelous, fabulous road of human understanding, great pollinization, cross-pollinization of Eastern wisdom, uh, Western civilization, mixing all up, blending Islam and Christianity wisely, alcohol and hashish wisely. Well, that road, our sacred road, the road to Kathmandu, the nations fucked it up, chopped it in half, but we still wiggled and survived. Started with the ruthless Russian invasion of Afghanistan in 1980, followed by the American invasion, still going on today. Trillions of precious do uh, dollars down the drain and even more thousands of soul deaths. Let that sink in. You might have survived your military experience, but your soul died. If you kill somebody, you kill yourself. Yeah. When will uh, our planet ever have these astral asshole nations lower into the realm of where they're appropriate. I mean, they're real. We need them. But they shouldn't be ruling because they can't rule globally. Because you have 200 nations all uh, embedded in self-righteousness to the nth degree. And, well, right now, uh, it's written in the New York Times today, we have this coronavirus coming out of Wuhan, China. And everybody, all the nations are scrabbling to just like, we won't fly in or out of there anymore. And, you know, where's the global emergency fund just for these pandemics that can kill millions of people? There aren't, there aren't any. So I'm just, uh, my wish, my prayer, my meditation is that an earth people government uh, arise, manifest. And uh, sure, we'll still have nations, but they'll be, you know, down the power chain. They won't be able to war with each other anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Golden memories of Eddie. Flashback into our first house in Anjuna Beach. Oh, here comes David with a half shell of coconut coffee. <laughs> mm, good Indian coffee. And mm, wander over to 80's porch and smoke a chillum of hashish with the... Uh, Notorious boys and girls, everybody's naked, sexy, having fun. Yeah, let's party and hang out together. These golden memories have caused me, ever since, to suffer from post-ecstatic bliss disorder. See these smile burns? Oh, I'm just, you know... <laughs> Yeah. Well, my private farewell to Eddie. It came to me in silent, sacred way. I'm glad. What happened was I'm returning from a four-month trip from Southeast Asia. Got a little day pack, briefcase, and great digital camera. Two months in Cambodia. <laughs> my favorite zone. On the planet, two months. Oh, yeah. Angkor Wat. Islands in the Mekong in the south. From northern Thailand. I crossed a river. Caught a boat near China down the Mekong. A couple days later, came out in Luang Prabang. Gorgeous, ancient royal capital. Beautiful temples, food, people, intelligence civilization, and then crossed over to Thailand, over to Kochang, and met up with some California friends in Bangkok, just had a wonderful time, especially up north, Chiang Mai, Pai, rented a motor scooter there, and just, it's just so gorgeous up there. <laughs> anyway, I'm all blissed out, I'm not sleepy, come back, San Francisco airport, uh, 
my housemates in San Francisco, where I have my writing studio and where I live, yeah, they're long asleep. They leave the porch light on. When I let myself into the room for the first time in four months, uh, oh, there's something on my roll-top desk. Wow, half-page article from the Chronicle. Oh, headlined, <laughs> noted hippie's death. Mark's end of an era. Yeah, I have page, uh, full-color photo of Eddie. Hmm. So I read the article, saved it, of course, all these years. Uh, October 2010, Pond Jim Go, Eight Finger Eddie's time has come and gone. Eddie, touted as the grandfather of the hippies, died last week in a beachside village in Goa. Yeah, Eddie helped put the West Coast state of Go on the world map for backpackers and stoners first. Uh, chilled out beaches, uh, <laughs> as you heard all about. Uh, well, today it's mostly Indian tourists because uh, while we had 100% freedom, let that sink in. We had total freedom. Well, the Indians today, mostly they're young Indians uh, coming to go for romantic uh, rendezvous. They, they'll take 5% of freedom, get away from the grandparents up in Bombay, trying to arrange their marriages with whoever. Get away from them. Oh, you might be a couple of gay guys. You want to hold hands in public? You want to wear a thong uh, swimsuit? Make out on the beach? Just go right ahead. You're in Goa. Goa now, it started out as a hippie freedom trip, and now it's like an Indian freedom trip. <laughs> Goa exudes freedom if you play it right. Yeah. Uh, well, let me get back to the article. Uh, the hippies. A shocking sight. I mean, it was 1965. Russians first spacewalked. Americans invaded Vietnam. Bob Dylan went electric. <laughs> and Juno Beach, a tiny hamlet with just a few chai shops. And uh, just the sight of those hippies, lean, unkempt, uh, you know, Beatles haircuts, almost naked. They only wore silver cord belt and from the belt was a twine hanging their hashish pipe <laughs> uh, these hippies like eight finger eddie loved our place and we were in love with them because of the way they We called Dominique Francis, age 65, go a local writer, yeah. Ah, the death and cremation of Eight Finger Eddie in October 2010 made all the world newspapers, including the San Francisco one and a big splash around the world briefly. Yet life summaries uh, in newspaper obituaries are agonizingly marginal. You know, they reduce a complex person's life into a few paragraphs. And, uh, yeah, the, 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 the summary shallowness in the descriptions of Eddie by non-participants in the India hippie trip, <laughs> they didn't know what they were talking about, so it ends up a caricature, a kind of a cartoon. I mean, it's like a judge sentencing a hippie to 10 years in jail because he had a couple hits of LSD. Well, the judge, did he ever experiment with LSD? They don't know what they're talking about. It's like, you know, uh, get a life, drop a hit of acid at Burning Man. You know, we don't need these clinics and scientific research. Bullshit, you know. Yeah, uh, well, I calmly became aware that, uh, oh, wow, 
of all the people in the world, I was the most, uh, the guy that had all the best photographs of Eddie, Eddie and I just interviewed him for over those two months at Joe Banana's Chai Shop, and my inner angels, well, silently assigned me to the task to write his life story. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked full-time in San Francisco um, for four months to put this memoir together, another couple of months to gather the photographs and design the book. I design all my own books, a gorgeous coffee table book, just say finger Eddie and your smartphone and you'll be guided how to get, get one if you want it. Um, I didn't polish the book and I'm not polishing these memo uh, video memoirs either. Uh, like Eddie, my stories are folksy and they have rough edges. You may notice that sometimes they get words uh, out of place. Uh, just look into the context. I'm not going to go back and, you know, make everything perfect. I, I do remember I said that Eddie was a notorious thief stealing rupees out of Valerie's purse. It was Harry. There's an example, but later you'll, you'll get the context. So, uh, well, when I found out that silent night, and I'm glad it was silent. I was alone, you know middle of the night, dark, uh, I did not weep. Mm. The tears came later while I was keyboarding his life story. Tears splashing on the backs of my hand over my laptop, running down my face. That's when Eddie's spirit came gushing out onto the pages. Mm -hmm. I miss Eddie deeply. Uh, between my last interviews with Eddie and his cremation, both my parents, my beloved first gurus, they died in Florida 27 days apart. Yeah. I have fashioned a special place in my heart for mom and dad. And uh, now my most cherished friend, Eddie has, he's gone too. So I welcome him too to dwell in my heart forever. Yeah, I welcome Eddie deep within my heart. Unconditionally, where everybody is welcome. Well, I will not ask anybody for money. I will not ask anybody to do any work. You may contribute if you want to, but if that's not enough, I'll provide for everyone. Hmm. Eddie, thanks for your lifetime of friendship. Yeah. I'm glad I could tell your story. Because mine is nothing special either.